India's flag hoisted in space is Rose's first solar mission Aditya L1 created history many secrets will be revealed Tensions increased between India and Maldives controversy started over remarks on PM Modi India lodged objection Indian cities in the race to become international wetland city names of Udaipur Bhopal Indore came up official announcement will be made soon Rhinoceros return to forest area of Assam rhinoceros seen in Lao Khoa and Burhach Pori wildlife sanctuary return after 40 years and UNESCO's World Heritage Committee meeting will be held in India. India will chair this committee for the first time. The meeting will be held in July. Recently, NSIL, that is New Space India Limited, a commercial arm of ISRO, has announced the launch of a communication satellite GSAT-20. It will be launched using the Falcon 9 rocket of a privately owned space company SpaceX. NSIL will launch communication satellite for the first time from SpaceX rocket. Let us tell you that GSAT-20 is a high throughput car band satellite. It has also been named GSAT-N2. It will be fully owned, operated and funded by NSIL. Its weight is about 4700 kg which provides high throughput of about 48 Gbps. It will provide Kaka band HTS capability with coverage across India including Andaman and Nicobar and Lakshadweep islands. Actually Kaka band communication satellites are used in the areas of broadband services, military operations and disaster management. Its role can also be seen in remote or rural area communications, mobile backhaul and enterprise applications. It is noteworthy that New Space India Limited or NSIL is a fully owned company of the Government of India under the administrative control of the Department of Space. It was established in the year 2019 under the Companies Act 2013. Its primary objective is to enable Indian industries to pursue space related activities with high technology. Let us tell you that Falcon 9 is a reusable two stage rocket that is designed by SpaceX company for reliable and safe transportation of payload in earth's orbit and beyond it is the world's first orbital class reusable rocket reusability allows rockets to be used again reducing the cost of access to space recently isro announced that aditya l1 mission has been placed in the halo orbit around to the l1 point a halo orbit is a periodic three dimensional orbit at l1 point involving sun earth and a spacecraft This particular halo orbit has been chosen for the 5 year lifetime of the mission. It is worth noting that the L1 point has been chosen for a special reason. In fact, satellites placed in the halo orbit of the L1 point can observe the sun continuously without any eclipse. Also according to ISRO, every solar storm emerging from the sun and moving towards the earth passes through the L1, due to which in-depth study of the sun is possible. At the same time, there are special points in space called Lagrange points. Here a field of attraction and repulsion is generated due to the gravitational force of the sun and the earth. These points are named in honor of the mathematician Joseph Louis Lagrange. Currently there are Lagrange points named L1, L2, L3, L4 and L5. These points can be used by the spacecraft to maintain position and reduce fuel consumption. Let us tell you that Aditya L1 is India's first solar mission. It was launched on September 2, 2023. Before India, America, Germany and Europe have sent space missions to study the sun. Recently Prime Minister Narendra Modi visited Lakshadweep. During his trip he shared some pictures of the moments spent in Lakshadweep on social media. After this discussion started on social media that India is preparing Lakshadweep as an alternative to Maldives in tourism. Some ministers of Maldives also made derogatory remarks on this. The Maldives government has suspended these ministers due to their alleged remarks. Let us tell you that Maldives is located in the Indian Ocean region to the south of India. 
It is a major tourist destination for Indians. Its GDP mainly depends on tourism. It has historically had close and friendly relations with India due to geographical proximity and cultural ties. India is one of the largest trading partners of Maldives. In the year 2021, the Indian company Afcons has signed the contract for the biggest project of Maldives, Greater Malay Connectivity Project. India has given a grant of 100 million US dollars to Maldives for this project. It has also been financed by a credit line of 400 million US dollars. India provides training to the National Defence Force of Maldives. It fulfills about 70% of their defence training requirements. Defence cooperation exercises like Ekuvarin Dosti Ekta and Operation Shield are conducted between the both countries. Let us tell you that India has conducted many operations to help Maldives. In 1988, under Operation Cactus, the Indian Armed Forces helped Maldivian government to stop the coup. At the same time, during the Malay water crisis in 2014, India had launched Operation Neer, whereas India had supplied medicines to Maldives under Operation Sanjeevani to deal with COVID-19. Recently, an inscription has been discovered in Goa. It has been discovered near Mahadev Temple in Kakoda, Goa. This inscription is written in Kannad and Sanskrit language. It is said to be related to the Kadamb period of the 10th century. This inscription throws light on the Kadam period in Goa. It also provides information on the historical and socio-cultural importance of that time. This inscription describes an important event in which the son, Gunjaya, dies in order to fulfill the ambition of Talara Nevaya. It is written in the literary style of the Talangir inscription of Jaisima I of the same period. It is noteworthy that Kadam was an ancient Karnataka royal dynasty. It was established by Mayur Sharma around 345 AD. He established his dominance in North Karnataka and Konkan region by making Banwasi his capital. Information related to this dynasty can be obtained from inscriptions. These include the Talagunda, Gunjanur, Chandravali, Halasi and Halmidi inscriptions written in Sanskrit and Kannad. Let us tell you that the Kadambas of Goa were subordinate to the Chalukyas of Kalyana. In fact, Chalukya Emperor Tailapa II appointed Kadam Shashtadev as the Mahamandaleshwar of Goa to defeat the Rashtrakutas. Shashtadev have conquered the city of Chandwara by defeating Shilaharas in 960 AD. Later, he conquered the port of Gopak Patan, that is present-day Goa. Let us tell you that Chalukya dynasty was a famous Kshatriya dynasty of ancient South India. This dynasty ruled southern and central India between the 6th century and the 12th century. The real founder of this dynasty is considered to be Pulakeshin I. He made Vatapi his capital. Recently, West Bengal organized a four-day workshop on Sohrai painting. The objective of this four-day workshop was to celebrate and preserve the age-old artistic heritage of the Hazari Park region. The event was organized in Kone Doba, a village near Jhar Gram in West Bengal. Let us tell you that Kone Doba is a Santhal tribe dominated area where artists from Kolkata have started a Chalchitra Academy to develop indigenous art. It is noteworthy that Sohrai painting is practiced by indigenous communities. This painting is made especially in the states of Jharkhand, Bihar, Odisha and West Bengal. Hazari Bagh region of Jharkhand has received the GI tag for this painting art. Women of Hazari Bagh have been decorating their homes with Sohrai paintings taking inspiration from the ancient cave paintings discovered in the region. The artistic expressions of this painting display vibrant flora and fauna. Sohrai painting is a form of indigenous painting used to fill walls with artwork and create handicrafts. It is mainly the art of women of Kurmi, Santhal, Munda, Orao, Agarya, Ghatwal tribes. Sohrai paintings are distinctive in their vibrant colors, intricate patterns and symbolic motifs. Sohrai festival is organized every year in Hazari Bagh and other tribal dominated area, making the harvest season and arrival of winter. Let us tell you that Hazari Bagh is a major area of India's rich tribal culture. Communities like Munda, Santhal, Orao, Agarya, Birhor, Kurmi, Prajapati, Ghatwal and Ganju live here. Recently, India has nominated three cities for the WCA, that is Wetland City Accreditation Scheme under the Ramsar Convention. These cities are Indore and Bhopal of Madhya Pradesh and Udaipur of Rajasthan. It is noteworthy that these are the first three Indian cities to be included in this scheme. These cities have made efforts to protect natural and man-made wetlands. And these efforts have helped these cities in getting international recognition. Sirpur, Yashwant Sagar, Bhoj wetland and Udaipur wetlands are present here. 
These wetlands provide livelihood opportunities and recreational and cultural values to its citizens along with flood regulation. Let us tell you that Wetland City Accreditation is a voluntary recognition system. It was started in the year 2015 under the Ramsar Convention during COP12. This system certifies cities that have taken exceptional steps to safeguard their urban wetlands. At the same time, its objective is to promote the conservation and wise use of urban and peri-urban wetlands. Besides, socio-economic benefits are also to be provided to the local people. Let us tell you that Ramsar Convention on Wetlands is an intergovernmental agreement. It provides a framework for the conservation and wise use of wetlands and their resources. This convention was adopted in the year 1971 in the Iranian city of Ramsar, while it was implemented in 1975. India has signed this convention in the year 1982. Currently, there are 75 Ramsar sites in India. For more information, let us tell you that Indore city was founded by the Holkar dynasty. This is the cleanest city of India. It has also been the winner of Smart City Award 2023 for Best Sanitation, Water and Urban Environment. At the same time, Bhopal is one of the cleanest cities of India, Bhoj Wetland, which is also called the lifeline of this city is a Ramsar site. Whereas Udaipur city is surrounded by five major wetlands, which includes Pichola, Fateh Sagar, Rang Sagar, Swarup Sagar and Dut Talai. Recently, an annual census of birds has been conducted in Chilka Lake of Odisha. This year's bird census report counted more than 1 million migratory birds of more than 180 species. According to the report, more than 6,000 birds have been spotted compared to last year. This also includes the rare Palas fish eagle species, which is spotted after a decade. Let us tell you that Palas fish eagle is also known as band-tailed fish eagle. It is a large brownish sea eagle. Its scientific name is Haliatius leucoryphus. Also, it belongs to the Echipetridae family. It can also be seen from lowlands to an altitude of 5,000 meters along lakes, swamps, and large rivers. Its length is 72 to 84 cm and wingspan is 180 to 215 cm. Its weight ranges from about 2 to 3.3 kg in female and 4.4 to 7.3 kg in males. It mainly eats fish and lays eggs in a nest built on a tall tree near water. It is found in India, Bangladesh, Myanmar and many Central Asian countries. It is protected in endangered category in the IUCN Red List. Let us inform you that Chilka Lake is the largest saltwater lake in Asia and the second largest lagoon in the world. In 1981, it was designated the first Indian wetland of international importance under the Ramsar Convention. Nalwana Island located inside this lake was declared a bird century in the year 1987. This island spread over about 16 square kilometer is a destination for migratory birds. It is also the habitat of many endangered species of plants and animals. Recently, rhinos were seen again in Lao Khova, Buraj Pori, wildlife century after about 40 years. Actually, in the year 1983, about 45 to 50 rhinos were found in this forest. But this species faced serious threats due to illegal hunting, as a result of which they became extinct from the region. Let us tell you that Lao Khova and Burhajpuri Wildlife Sanctuary are two protected areas of Assam. As a part of Greater Kaziranga, it is situated on the banks of Brahmaputra River in an area of about 309 square kilometer. Although these two protected areas have different names, but both form a single entity ecologically and geographically. It is mainly surrounded by Kaziranga National Park, Orang National Park, and Pobitora Wildlife and other centuries. It also serves as a connecting corridor between Kaziranga and Orang National Parks. It consists of alluvial grasslands, river banks, and semi-evergreen forest interspersed with wetlands and river systems. At the same time, many types of medicinal trees and plants are also seen here. These include Simul Korai, Ajar, Hijal, etc. Along with this, it is also home to one-horned rhinoceros, tigers, leopards, wild buffalo, hog deer, wild boar, and elephants. Let us tell you that there are five species of rhinoceros found around the world, which include African white and black rhinoceros, one-horned rhinoceros, Java, and Sumatran rhinoceros. However, only the one-horned rhinoceros is found in India. It is considered the largest among the rhino species. In India, it is found in Assam, West Bengal and Uttar Pradesh. It is protected under Vulnerable Category in the IUCN Red List and Appendix 1 of Sites, 
वेयर एज इट इज ऑल्सो लिस्टेड इन शेड्यूल वन ऑफ द वाइल्ड लाइफ प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट नाइनटीन सेवेंटी टू Recently scientists have found a natural remedy to protect eucalyptus from eucalyptus knot beetle. Actually researchers have succeeded in collecting naturally occurring pathogenic fungi. Scientists have found it capable of being converted into a biopesticide to control beetle pest. Let us tell you that the eucalyptus knot beetle insect is endemic to Australia. This is also commonly known as Gonipeteras platensis. This is a leaf eating beetle. It is found in countries around the world where eucalyptus is grown. It stops the growth of the tree by eating leaves, buds and shoots. Also due to its high flying capacity, it causes damage in large areas. It can be controlled with the help of microwasp Anaphis spp. Let us tell you that eucalyptus is a native plant of Australia. It is a type of tree which is also called eucalyptus tree. Oil obtained from its leaves and stems is used in various medicines, drugs and cosmetics. Eucalyptus tree has the capacity to absorb water 3 times more than other trees. Besides, the process of transpiration from their leaves also happens rapidly. Its root absorb moisture from the soil and plays a major role in making it barren, due to which it is considered enemy of the environment. Its wood is used for a variety of purposes, but especially it is an important material for paper pulp production. The European Union's Copernicus Climate Change Service Organization or C3S says that according to records the year 2023 was probably the world's hottest year in the last 1 million years. C3S affirmed 2023 as the hottest year in the global temperature records since 1850. It is noteworthy that in the year 2023 the earth's temperature was on average 1.48 degrees Celsius warmer than in the pre-industrial period. Last year the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere was 419 parts per million the highest level ever recorded according to C3S Each fraction of temperature increase exacerbates extreme and destructive weather disasters In 2023 the frequency of heat waves increased from China to Europe Apart from this thousands of people died in Libya due to extreme rain It is noteworthy that in the 2015 Paris agreement countries had agreed to try to prevent global warming from exceeding 1.5 degrees celsius that is 2.7 degrees fahrenheit so that the world can be saved from the most serious consequences of global warming although the limit of this fixed temperature has not been crossed yet its danger have started emerging recently gi tag that is geographical indication has been provided to more than 17 indian products This includes products from states and union territories like Odisha, Arunachal Pradesh, West Bengal and Jammu and Kashmir. At the same time these products mainly include Langia Sora painting, Dongria cone shawl, Khajuri guda and Wancho wooden crafts. Let us tell you that GI tag or geographical indication is used for such products which have a specific geographical area of origin. This highlights the speciality, quality and uniqueness of these products. Actually GI tag is a proof of the quality of a product and its distinct identity. The purpose of giving this tag is to promote the identity of that product at the national and international level. GI tag has been defined as a aspect of intellectual property rights under the Paris Convention for the Protection of Industrial Property. It is noteworthy that at the international level it is regulated by the World Trade Organization. At the same time in India this work is done under geographical indications of goods. Registration and Protection Act 1999 This act was implemented from the year 2003 Registration of geographical indication is valid for 10 years For information let us tell you that in the year 2004 Darjeeling tea was the first Indian product to receive GI tag Paintings from Kangra orange from Nagpur and pashmina from Kashmir are among the major products with GI tags Many products including Mahabaleshwar strawberry blue pottery of Jaipur Banarsi saree and laddu of Tirupati and Kadaknath murga have been given GI tag. Recently UNESCO has announced that the 46th session of the UNESCO World Heritage Committee will be organized in India. It is noteworthy that for the first time India will chair and host the UNESCO World Heritage Committee. This year the meeting of this committee will be held in New Delhi from 21st to 31st July. The event places New Delhi at the center of the global discussion on the preservation of cultural and historical heritage. It is also an important opportunity to showcase India's rich cultural heritage on the global stage. 
let us tell you that unesco world heritage committee is a committee of unesco that is united nations educational scientific and cultural organization it was adopted in the 17th session of unesco in the year 1972 its objective is to identify and conserve cultural and natural heritage of outstanding universal value that can be considered for inclusion in the world heritage list this committee is made up of representatives of 21 member states who are elected by the united nations general assembly The session of this committee is organized every year according to the World Heritage Convention the tenure of the committee members is 6 years however many nations voluntarily choose to limit their tenure to 4 years in order to serve other nations for information let us tell you that UNESCO is a special agency of the United Nations it was established in the year 1945 its objective is to promote world peace and security in education art science and culture It also aims to advance peace, sustainable development and human rights by facilitating cooperation and conversation among nations. It has 195 member countries and 8 associate members. Its headquarters is located in Paris. India became its member in the year 1946. After the news, now let's take a look at five questions related to the bulletin. Questions based on today's bulletin are first question is consider the following statements in the context of the kadam inscription recently seen in the news one it has been discovered in karnataka two this inscription is written in kannad and sanskrit language three this inscription belongs to the chola empire how many of the above statements is or are correct only one only two all three or none of these Next question is consider the following statements with reference to wetland city accreditation. One it was started in the year 2015. Two under this Indian cities Indore, Bhopal and Udaipur have been nominated. Three this program is run by the United Nations Development Program. How many of the above statements is or are correct? Only one, only two, all three or none of these. Next question is consider the following statements regarding one horned rhinoceros. One it is found in Assam, West Bengal and Uttar Pradesh in India. Two it is listed under the vulnerable category in the IUCN red list. Three it is protected under schedule 1 of the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. How many of the above statements is or are correct? Only one, only two, all three or none. Next question is consider the following statements regarding geographical indication tag. One it is given to products that have a specific geographical area of origin. Two internationally it is regulated under the geographical indications of goods registration and protection act 1999. Three in India it is regulated by the World Trade Organization. How many of the above statements is or are incorrect? Only one, only two, all three or none. Last question is consider the following statements regarding Soharai painting. One it is specially made in the states of Jharkhand, Bihar, Odisha and West Bengal. Two the artistic expressions of this painting give a vibrant display of flora and fauna. Three this painting has received the GI tag. How many of the above statements is or are incorrect? Only one, only two, all three or none. Recently Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated the 10th vibrant Gujarat Global Summit 2024. This summit is being organized in Gandhinagar, Gujarat. This time the summit is based on the theme of Gateway to the Future. CEOs of many multinational companies are participating in this and the special thing about this summit is that an exhibition has been organized about works like Dholera Gift City, Dream City, Ahmedabad Mumbai high speed rail along with this new sectors like renewable energy semiconductors green hydrogen and electric vehicles have been included in it Recently World Hindi Day 2024 was celebrated on this occasion Swami Vivekanand Cultural Center the cultural wing of the Indian High Commission organized a two day conference at the Sri Lanka Foundation in Colombo This year the day focused on the theme of linking Hindi traditional knowledge and artificial intelligence. Let us tell you that World Hindi Day is celebrated every year on 10 January. The purpose of celebrating this day is to promote Hindi language in foreign countries. The first World Hindi Day was celebrated in the year 2006. It is noteworthy that Hindi is the third most spoken language in the world after Mandarin and English. Recently famous classical singer Ustad Rashid Khan passed away in Kolkata West Bengal. 
55 year old Rashid Khan was suffering from prostate cancer. Let us tell you that Ustad Rashid Khan was related to Rampur Sahaswan Singh King. He was born in Badon, Uttar Pradesh. He received his initial training from his maternal grandfather Ustad Nisar Hussain Khan. He had achieved great achievements in the field of music due to which he has given many other awards including Padma Bhushan, Padma Shri and Sangeet Natak Akadmi Award. Recently, the World Health Organization released the 11th edition of the International Classification of Diseases. In this, the Ministry of Ayurveda has included terminology related to Ayurveda, Unani and Siddh medical systems. This step by the Ministry of Ayush will bring global uniformity in Ayurveda, Unani and Siddh medicines in the form of a code to define diseases. ICD provides information on the extent, causes and consequences of human disease and death worldwide through coded data. It facilitates the collection and dissemination of data on various diseases and mortality. Recently, the Ministry of Defence has proposed a rollover scheme to the states and union territories to show their tabloids. According to this proposal, states and union territories will display their tableau in the Republic Day Parade once in three years, so that during this period all the states can get an opportunity to represent themselves. For this, a Memorandum of Understanding has been signed between the Ministry of Defence and the states. Let us tell you that every year about 15 tableau are selected from states and union territories for the Republic Day Parade. Let us tell you that this year the tableau of 16 states and union territories have been selected for the 2024 Republic Day Parade. Recently, researchers at the Indian Institute of Science studied 10 years of data on the effects of forest logging and climate change on bird communities in tropical mountains. After this research, scientists said that forest logging and climate change pose a threat to mountain birds. If statistics are to be believed, many bird species have started moving to higher altitudes due to rising temperatures. The research team collected data from the Eagle Nest Wildlife Sanctuary located in Arunachal Pradesh. According to the data collected, smaller sized birds live better in deforested areas as they can tolerate higher temperatures, whereas larger bird species are making primary forests their habitat. It was found that logging can lead to the loss of large-bodied, old and growth-dependent species and reduce overall biodiversity. Recently, Cyclone Alvaro hit the coast of Madagascar. More than 16,000 people have been affected by this cyclone. Some of them died while many people left their places of residence and went to safer places. It is noteworthy that Cyclone Alvaro is the first cyclonic storm of the year 2024. A yellow alert was issued for Morondava, Manja, Morombe and Toliara districts at the onset of the cyclone. After the cyclone, when landslides started in these areas, the yellow alert was upgraded to red alert. Let us tell you that Madagascar is an island country rich in biodiversity which is located on the southeastern coast of Africa. Recently, beach games were organized at Ghogla Beach in the Union Territory of Diu. Union Sports Minister Anurag Singh Thakur inaugurated this sports festival. The beach games features a total of eight different sports including beach volleyball, pancake salad, beach boxing, beach soccer and sea swimming, as well as traditional sports such as malkham, beach kabaddi and tug of war. More than 1200 players participated in it. Since the subject theme of this event was dolphins, various sports posters and banners featured dolphins. The Union Sports Minister said that due to this festival, beach sports will be promoted in other coastal states and union territories of the country also. Recently, Indian Spice Research Institute Cozy Coat has developed a new granular lime-based trichoderma formulation tricholine. Tricholine is a fungal biocontrol agent which is used to control a variety of soil bone pathogens. It neutralizes the acidity of the soil along with promoting plant growth. Scientists working behind the new formulation say that trichoderma acts as a successful biopesticide and biofertilizer in crop production. This formulation will promote the growth of useful microbes in the soil and will also benefit the crop by improving the physical condition of the soil and increasing microbial activity in the soil. Recently, Microsoft has started an initiative called 
AI Odyssey under this initiative 1 lakh developers in India will be trained in AI tools and applications anyone interested in AI can get this training in one month long program the curriculum under this program consists of two levels all participants in the program will have to complete both the levels by January 31st 2024 Additionally participants who complete both levels can also win a VIP pass for the Microsoft AI tour to be held in Bangalore on February 8 2024